Hi everyone, I'm Becky and I am here to teach you design for free. If you'd like to learn more about how I made these Islamic sacred geometry puzzles, stay tuned and I'll show you. Hello again and welcome back to my kitchen studio. <laughs> Today when I was setting up the studio, I made a bit of a mess that I figured I might as well clean up on camera. These are some geometric puzzles that I made for an assignment a long time ago. I have the cardboard prototype from the laser cutter and then the multiple uh, types of wood final version. I have sold one of these to my friend Jihei. <laughs> Thank you Jihei for supporting me. But I just figured I would put this together on camera. So it starts like this. This puzzle is based on Islamic geometry, or as I prefer to call it, the sacred geometry. It's based on It is based around six-pointed geometry, like this six-pointed star. So something you might not know about me is that my undergraduate degree is in art history. How about a little bit of Islamic art history, huh? As you might be familiar in, um, in Islam, it is... I'm trying to think of a different word for blasphemous. It is very disrespectful to depict the Prophet Muhammad. What you might not know is that in Islamic art is that depicting just about any sort of figure is also not done. That is why when you look at Islamic art and architecture, they have the most incredible geometric patterns and floral patterns. I mean, it's just a perfect and beautiful example of how the rules that we live by in a culture is specifically what creates beauty and what creates beautiful art and design. All right, first layer is done. It looks like the cardboard has two different colors on both sides, so I'm gonna clean this up to reflect that. If you're not familiar with much Islamic art, I recommend Googling the Alhambra. It is a palace in southern Spain that exhibits some of the finest Islamic designs and architecture, including patterns that don't look very different from this. Another great example of Islamic architecture would be the Institut du Monde Arabe in Paris, the Institute of the Arab World in Paris. There we go, much better. Which is kind of a postmodern take on Islamic architecture. There are Islamic patterns made out of metal sheets that can close and open like lenses, and they close and open automatically based on the amount of sun and the temperature outside. Or at least they're intended to. I don't know that it's working anymore. <laughs> If you're ever in Paris, make sure you go check out the Institut du Monde Arabe, and it's right next to the botanical gardens in Paris, which are free, and it's right next to the river, and it's right next to one of my favorite water fountains in Paris. Wow, I sound bougie as hell, but those are all free things. <laughs> I really love religious art and architecture. I mean, if you like art history, you basically have to care about religion. That's super debatable, but still. I think there are a lot of mosques around the world that compete for like the most beautiful buildings in the world. They're incredible. Okay, so that's done. But what I wanna show you is how different patterns get revealed when you remove certain parts of the puzzle. Ta-da! Boom! And there we have some of the complexity that's typical of Islamic geometry. I like that this puzzle invites you to cover and reveal things as you please. Originally, I wanted this puzzle to be see-through so you could see all the lines throughout the puzzle, and that was the pattern that I was going for, but I'm really happy with how it looks like this. It just goes to show, when I prototyped this out of cardboard, I wasn't expecting to enjoy the opacity of the cardboard as much as I did, but the opacity is something that I stuck with as I moved to the wooden version. So this wooden version, by the way, glued together and is now warped, unfortunately. This wooden version I displayed at the end of your show at my school. This thing is pretty warped. That's a bummer. Well, let's keep going. If you're wondering how I learned to do this, no, I did not apprentice under an Islamic <laughs> architecture specialist. I learned from our good old friend, the internet. I will link to two useful YouTube videos that I used. 
And I will link to my personal website where I have some documentation of the process that I went through. Basically, I used Rhino. It's a 3D modeling program, but Rhino is also really great for modeling 2D geometries. Oh, this is a little messed up. All right, I'm improvising. Here's the final state of this for now. Something interesting about this puzzle, I tested it on some people. Like I gave it to them unmade, see if, see if they could make, build it. So very different responses. Some people could get it pretty much right away and some people just uh, gave up. Of course, I am now so well versed in this puzzle that I could put it together in my sleep. Can I unwarp wood? Comment below. All right, there we have it. Oh, it's so pretty, isn't it? And it's got this depth to it because it's got steps. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna show you some of the images of the process that, that I used to get to this point. All right, my website, beckymarshall.com. You can see the color choice tool that I mentioned in my last video. You can see the inflatables project that I got a lot of YouTube videos about. And here's the sacred geometry project. So the way I've described it is that it's Islamic geometry explorations coded into SVG with randomization applied leading to a layered wooden puzzle. And the first documentation we have is a GIF of my Rhino file with all of the guidelines that I created based on these YouTube tutorials with a sacred geometry pattern layered over it to show how it works. So I'm not here to teach you how to do this, but I can direct you to these two links here, which are how I learned how to do it. They're great videos. Up next is the example of when I first coded this into SVG. And I've got a link to see the code in action on your browser. So here it is. When I applied randomization, whenever I refresh, it looks different. Different sizes, different colors, different opacities. But this code is actually not perfect, although it's pretty close. If you look at the six pointed stars in the center, you can tell that they do not have radial symmetry. I was really frustrated by this. So you know what I did? I, in my master's program for design, I learned trigonometry for the first time. And I came up with this pattern, which uses trigonometry to code these six pointed star hexagon patterns. In this code, I used trigonometry to create the perfect six pointed stars in the center and you can see that the code lays them out in a hexagon grid. I was pretty proud of myself for learning trigonometry for this. I failed algebra two in high school because I thought it wasn't useful. And here I am now, I'm a 3D designer. I need math. <laughs> I need math all the time. And it makes me wonder why don't they teach applied mathematics in the United States public school system. And then I realize, oh, it's because we have crappy leaders. So that answers that question. Now for both of these hexagon patterns, if you'd like to see the source code for it, all you've got to do is bring it up in the browser and inspect code. What you want to pull up is the script node. And in hexagon pattern two, In the trigonomic functions, I've written a lot of notes for you to check out. If you don't know trig, though, you'd probably want to go to Khan Academy and catch up first. And then finally, I have a GIF of me playing with the puzzle. This one's different than the example you saw in the video earlier. This is the puzzle that I gave away to Jihei. I just love the contrast between the light woods and the dark woods and the natural finishes. Thank you for joining me today. If you had some fun, I hope you did, hit the like button, hit subscribe, and why not just hit the bell notification button. If there's anything you'd like to see me design, prototype, test, or build, leave a comment below. I'm very open to suggestions. Keep making stuff and keep prototyping. See you next time.